So this was the man to coin the term, virtual reality. Let's dive in and find out about Jaron Lanier and his company, VPL. Immersed Robot Virtual Programming Languages, or VPL Research, was founded in 1984 by Jaron Lanier. It was one of the first companies to specialize in virtual reality-based products. Jaron Lanier was born in 1960 in New York and went on to study mathematical notation and computer programming at New Mexico State University, as well as art in his home city. In 1983, Lanier started to work for Atari, where he met Thomas G. Zimmerman, who had created a wearable glove, which included an optical flex sensor for human-computer interaction. This was called the Data Glove. After leaving Atari in 1984, Lanier and Zimmerman founded VPL Research which took the seat of the Data Glove idea and focused on expanding it to incorporate a wider variety of virtual reality peripherals in software. During the mid to late 80s, VPL Research developed a number of wearable human-computer interaction-focused peripherals. The Data Glove was the first of these but was expanded upon during the early days of VPL. While maintaining the optical flex sensors within the glove, Lanier and Zimmerman also made the addition of magnetic positional tracking sensors, which helped the device work better with the next major peripheral. Well, this is our virtual reality glove. It's called the Data Glove. And the idea is that you can put on this glove, and the glove lets you feel a world that doesn't exist as if it's real and pick up things in the world as if they're real. So it lets you reach into uh, an imaginary world. And, uh... The next peripheral would be a head-mounted display called the iPhone, as in EYE phone, rather than the more well-known namesake around today, of course. This headset had limited specs. An 80-degree horizontal field of view, 320 by 240 resolution black and white LCD screens. It had various color filters overlaid on top of these and also had built-in 6 degrees of freedom tracking. The iPhone could be used in tandem with the Data Glove to give gesture controls within rudimentary virtual worlds, which VPL had started to experiment with. These are the special glasses called the iPhones that you put on and um, when you put them on, you're seeing inside an imaginary world instead of inside the physical world. Mm -hmm. So uh, the idea is that by wearing computerized clothing right over your sense organs, you transport your sensory system into a reality that can be of any description. Everything about virtual reality that's powerful and beautiful happens because of how human beings are at the center of all of its conception and the way it's designed. I think that's a very humanistic approach to designing technology because in the future there'll be many cases where people are inside a virtual world and they want to design something in that virtual world. So the question is how will they do it? And sometimes they might sculpt, sometimes um, they might build things out of pieces and put them together, but I think for a lot of things they'll be using things that are like musical instruments that you play because musical instruments are the most powerful user interface that's ever been created for anything so far. Next, VPL developed a more all-encompassing virtual tracking method to go along with their previous two devices. This one was called the Data Suit and was a full-body outfit with built-in tracking sensors, which could detect movement of arms, legs, and torso. VPL also developed a device called the Audio Sphere, which used stereo to create 3D sounds, along with a visual programming language called Body Electric and a real time rendering engine called Isaac. With these key pieces of hardware and software, VPL thrived during the mid to late 80s. The idea is that in the future, all of our culture, our music, our writing, our art is going to be stored in computers and we're going to read it through computers and see it through computers and hear it through computers. And so um, what's really vital is for people to be able to control those computers in order for the culture to remain fluid and alive. And now we're going to point the one. one finger. Unfortunately, towards the end of the 80s, financial problems led to VPL filing for bankruptcy in 1990. 
Later that same decade, Sun Microsystems purchased all of VPL's patents. The iPhone headset was posthumously featured in the 1992 movie, The Lawnmower Man, a film which had strong themes of virtual reality throughout. That was really bad. After VPL, Lanier went on to work for a not-for-profit organization called Internet2 in 1997, which is a computer networking consortium. Lanier is a proficient musician and has also authored numerous books with a focus on technology and philosophy. He also criticized the current path of large social media companies in his 2018 book, 10 Arguments for Deleting Your Social Media Accounts Right Now. VPL was one of the leading pioneers of virtual reality hardware and software during the 80s, and while never focusing their efforts on a true consumer-based product, their research paved the direction in which modern-day virtual reality headsets now thrive in. It was probably yet another case of being too early to the party. While the fundamental principles developed by VPL were robust, the computing power, technology and mainstream acceptance was still a number of decades away for the company to have the longevity it probably deserved. Jaron Lanier and VPL remain a central pillar in the history of virtual reality however, and it is fascinating to see how some of those fundamental virtual reality principles remain in today's headsets. Well that's pretty much it for this video. Please hesitantly tap the like button, and if it's not too much of an inconvenience, then please also subscribe to this channel for more VR-focused content. I'll see you all on the flippity-flip.